Welcome to Operation Fishing Freedom. I'm Ben Olson. Today we're fishing with veteran Laura Ludwig, who served 36 years as a nurse and medic in the U.S. Army. Military veterans protect our great nation. Pro anglers Jay Garstecki and Ben Olson made it their duty to honor our heroes. They want to share soldiers' stories. The perfect place to carry out this mission? A fishing boat. Get ready to launch Operation Fishing Freedom. Brought to you by Great Clips. Painkiller, trailblazer, veteran. Words sewn into the patches of Laura Ludwig's vest. Also stitched into the fabric of U.S. Army history. Hey, Laura, come on in. Thank you. We have a beautiful day. You ready to catch some fish? I'm excited. Ready to catch those fish. The best way to start off the morning is with some donuts from Hans. You do a lot of fishing? Not as much as I would like. That work stuff really interferes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ain't that the truth? Laura often works 24-hour shifts as a nurse anesthetist at Methodist Hospital in Minnesota. Today's trip provides Laura with some rare recreational time. This is supposed to be the crappie spot right here. Again, always, allegedly, always. Allegedly. Laura Ludwig served her country more than 36 years as a medic overseas. Today, she spends her time advocating for women veterans everywhere. A lot of women veterans, they actually don't consider themselves veterans because they aren't acknowledged as veterans. Granted, the, the majority of veterans are men, but women have been in conflict, you know, in almost every conflict, dating back to the Revolutionary War. Laura works on behalf of several women's veteran advocacy groups founded to help those female service members who don't receive the recognition they deserve. And there are a lot of them, more than two million, in fact. And like Laura, they all have a story. I joined when I was like 17 and a half. Um, I was still in high school. You could join and then once you graduated at the end of the um, school year, then you went right into basic training. My dad swore me in, came in his uniform, raised his hand, I rose my hand and took the oath. It was very special. I moved up in the enlisted ranks pretty fast. I then returned to Minnesota and was part of the Minnesota Guard. You know, being the medic and things like that, it was great. And then I decided that I would go to the state commissioning school, the Minnesota Military Academy, because they had just started accepting women. Laura says harassment was commonplace. Despite having been a constant part of the armed services throughout history, Women simply were not welcome among the ranks back in those days. It was trailblazing. They weren't used to having women. At the academy, housing for women was located further away from the main buildings, often making the female recruits late to formation. So then they would punish everybody because the formation wasn't ready. So there was, you know, a lot of the men are going, oh, you know, they're dragging us down and they're making us look bad and we're being punished because of them. And it's like, hey, if we were housed closer, or if you sent the message sooner, we would have been here. So, yeah, there were some obstacles. It was kind of blazing the trail for the women that came after us. It is this trailblazing, this brave service that made Laura the advocate at the Academy all those years ago and also the advocate she continues to be today. 
never stop serving. You know, you're a soldier for life. I mean, whether you're deployed or at home helping other veterans. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips, Recon Boats, and by Evan Root Outboards. If you'd like to get some cool Operation Fishing Freedom gear, or simply make a donation so that we can take more veterans fishing, log on to our website, OperationFishingFreedom.com. For those who have served our country, there is no shortage of stories. The Women's Veteran Initiative is really a joint project where we are really just trying to bring awareness to women veterans as a whole. They normally are put off to the side. There's been a historical problem where we have not recognized women veterans over the years, starting as far back as the Civil War. So as we move forward, we really need to take emphasis and look back and look forward to how can we represent our women veterans. In fact, women have been on the front lines for nearly every major conflict in U.S. history, dating all the way back to the Revolutionary War. This project as a whole is the I'm Not Invisible project and this idea is that we wanted to take women veterans and we wanted to showcase them and just give everybody a little bit of their story. What we often hear is I have a soldier bumper sticker on my van and my husband gets the recognition all the time or I wear a hat but somebody looks at my husband or they look at my child and they give them the recognition as opposed to giving the recognition to me. Among the ranks of unsung heroes, a familiar face. Laura is part of our board and Laura is a resounding person when it comes to women's veterans initiatives as a whole. She has her fingers in every single veteran's pot you could possibly have because she believes that this Veterans Women's Initiative is important. Even in our fishing boat, she's helping veterans. Yeah, we're trying to get her into the Eagle's Healing Nest out in Anoka. Let me oh. just, I'll just. The Eagle's Healing Nest is yet another organization Laura helps. I really feel an obligation to support the veterans, even more so, not just because I am one, but because I realize that I don't think we're doing everything we can for the veteran population. They sacrificed to protect our way of life and our country, that in return, we should take care of them when they return. As a medic, Laura had two domains throughout her deployment the modern and well-kept Landstall Medical Center in Germany, and the war-ravaged fields of Afghanistan, where she served on the surgical team. We were kind of in the middle of things. And there was like incoming rounds and you never knew what was gonna happen. A dangerous job that came with memories, memories that would stick with Laura forever. Blood has a smell and mixed with like gunpowder, ammunition, mixed with, you know, body fluids. It, it's just a sickening sweet smell. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Great Clips. SKB cases and by St. Croix Rods. Among those Laura can thank for supporting her throughout her career, her own father. He was in the military and you know, he's always striking in his uniform. It was always, you know, wow. You know, something to really admire and look up to. 
so we have the military in common. If you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage and bonus content, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. If you're a U.S. military veteran living in Illinois, Wisconsin, or Minnesota, log on to takeavetfishing.org to find an event near you. We finally found what we're looking for. It's actually a little smallmouth bass. Well, it's something. It's a start. Humble. That's the feeling you get when you're around Army veteran Laura Ludwig. Yeah, look at it, it's curved there. A person who did not just save lives overseas, but continues to pave the way for women of our armed services. You continue to serve. Even if you're retired or you're out of uniform, you still continue to serve. So it's Soldier for Life. I belong to the Women's Veterans Initiative, which is a group of women veterans, and we're banded together so we can provide networking and advocacy and wellness for specifically for women veterans because there aren't that many programs for women veterans. But before she was fighting for women's rights at home, she was fighting to save lives in Afghanistan. War used to have where this was the line and all the enemy was on this side and you were on this side. You know, it was like the front line. Warfare isn't like that anymore. They're all around you. So there's no front and rear area. War has gripped the Middle East for decades. Laura found herself the only nurse anesthetist on her surgical team right in the thick of it. There was a few times where you would have like incoming fire or mortar rounds kind of falling around by you and if you were working you just had to keep on working. Laura saw too many people come through that tent, soldiers and civilians alike. They were all young, and it just sometimes seemed like a senseless loss of life to me for a cause that I wasn't even sure what our cause was. And, and that was difficult. Some young 19-year-old missing a leg, I mean, that irrevocably changed his life forever. And he, he's so much a soldier that he wants to go back. You know, he doesn't want to go home. He wants to finish the job he came to do. So much a soldier, so much a child. Nobody wants to think of their child dying alone. Sometimes I try to be like the mother surrogate, be there, comfort them and hold them as they kind of, as life just sort of passes through and goes out of their eyes. Just hope that if it was my son or daughter that somebody was there and they weren't alone. This week's Nonprofit of the Week, the Women's Veterans Initiative. Their mission is to improve the lives and well-being of women who have served in the military through innovative programs and services. Go to their website for more information. If you'd like to personally thank a vet that you saw in one of our episodes, or nominate a veteran to be featured in a future episode, log on to our website, OperationFishingFreedom.com. Operation Fishing Freedom is brought to you by Optima Batteries, Power Pole, and by Temple Bay Lodge. Oh, hey. 
He's got spirit, anyways. What he lacks in size, he makes up for in spirit. You can touch him. Giant man-eater right there. <laughs> Sometimes, the most compelling stories go untold. That's why U.S. Army veteran Laura Ludwig fights to make sure our female service members do not go unnoticed. Granted, the, the majority of veterans are men, but women have been in conflict, you know, in almost every conflict. But coming back, you know, society just doesn't recognize women as, as soldiers, as airmen, as pilots, as commanders. Unfortunately, Laura was no exception. How was your transition back to civilian life? You know, I didn't think it would be as difficult as it was. I thought, no big deal. And for a while it wasn't, but then I started noticing. I was irritable and one of the things that I didn't have is I was kind of an individual. I wasn't with a unit, so coming back, just me hopping off the plane, you know, no, no big ceremony, no welcoming back the unit, no families kind of a thing, you know, no hometown parade things when the unit comes back. So just kind of, it was kind of like a time warp. I went, you know, back to work. It's like, oh, you're back. You know, I have a, a startle reflex. Like I was in the operating room working and I didn't realize there was construction upstairs. All of a sudden, right above me, it was like a jackhammer. And I, of course, thought it was incoming rounds and I'm on the floor and everybody's looking at me. What are you doing down there? But Laura did not let this stop her from serving, leaving no soldier behind. That's the, the motto of our Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, Vets Helping Vets. You can call any of these guys in the middle of the night and having a tough time, I'll be there. Same thing, you know, I got that call this morning. We have a woman vet that's homeless. You know, who, who should we contact? Maybe that's why she was inducted into the Hall of Fame at the Minnesota Military Academy located at Camp Ripley. By the way, the first female inducted. Despite the awards and the acclaim, she maintains her top priority, fellow veterans. Nobody returns from war uninjured. There's a lot of invisible wounds and moral injuries that uh, these individuals have to live with for the rest of their lives. Things that they can't talk about, things that they can't share with their family, things that you can really only share with somebody that's been there. Women make up about 15% of the armed forces and about 10% of the veteran population is women. Here in Minnesota, there's 29,000 women veterans and people don't usually view women as veterans. Well, we know women veteran aren't as appreciated as they should be, but we have just a little something for you to let you know how much we appreciate your service. Wow. We have this custom rod built by Angry Bear Custom Rods. It's got the branches of the service on it. And it there. has my name on it. It has your name. It has our logo. Custom built just for you. That's this for you. is just awesome, guys. And then we wow. Your very own. Oh, I was admiring yours. That is great. Operation Fishing Freedom Jersey with your name on it. We so appreciate you sharing your story. Thank oh, you very yes. much. Thank you so much. This is truly an honor to be asked, but then these just, I'm speechless. Thank you so much. This well, is thank great. Thank you, and thank you for all you're doing to acknowledge our women veterans. We really appreciate it. A single fishing rod cannot make up for the years of lost recognition, but it is our hope that sharing Laura's story counts for something. 
there's been changes. It's been gradual. It's still sometimes a good old boys club, but they've made a lot of accommodations now, and it's much easier to be a woman in the military than it was back then. Changes inspired by Laura Ludwig. For that, we say thanks. If you know a veteran you'd like to see featured on an upcoming episode, go to our website, OperationFishingFreedom.com, and click on the Nominate button.